Hi, Pedro here, and today I have something special. The Gamer's Antiquity USB-C AV mod for the Nintendo Famicom. It's the first of many custom PCB mods coming down the line. Unlike other mods for the Famicom, this one does not set down voltage from 9 volts and works right off 5 volts out of the gate, saving energy and keeping cool. It also features an easily replaceable fuse as well as a current pot for brightness. AV comes out of the TRRS port for easy composite accessibility. And like other mods available, the Vita signal goes through the identical schematic diagram from the original Famicom. Now there are updates already in mind for this mod in the future, so let's get to the installation before getting to that. Let's begin the teardown by removing the six bottom screws. Continue to remove the next eight screws to release some of the board and PSU. There are three variants of the power supply, but that's no problem for this mod. This variant has a power switch attached to it, so just cut it free. Now to solder the ribbon cable from the motherboard. We'll free pin 21 on the PPU by desoldering and lifting it. You may also opt to trim it from the base and lift it, or just desolder and no lift. Now solder 24 gauge cable to pin 21 on the PPU, making sure to leave plenty of length for it towards the rear. This will give us video. We'll now solder cables to pins 1 and 2 on the CPU to get clean audio. For this border vision, insert a jumper between VS3 and 4 where the ribbon cable was. We're going to fit the board in place to get an idea for the length. In a bit, I'm going to show you the way to route the cables so that way they don't get into the way of the cartridge detector. So keep an eye on that and don't mind me. The switch will be connected to the VBUS via on the mod to VIA2 where the ribbon cable was. The cable from the CPU will connect to the CPU VIAs on the mod while the cable from the PPU will go to the VIA4 here. The last remaining VIA on the board connects to pin 1 where the ribbon cable was for ground. Route the cables either in the same tunnel as the controller cables or right under the motherboard. Absolutely avoid going near the ejector bits as the cables will be pinched and can damage the insulation while making it very hard to use the cartridge ejector. Other revision installations will follow the same steps for the CPU and PPU. Ground will still be connected to the ground and VBUS will have a single connection point to the bivolt rail without needing a jumper. Currently, all the vias are labeled on the opposite side of the mod. This will be changed in a future revision. Don't forget that you can use a multimeter on continuity mode to help you tone out things if you're ever unsure for other motherboard revisions. Reassemble, and we're done. The motherboard LED will blink once, indicating the PD handshaking process. When solid, continue to connect the TRRS cable insert the game, and play. There are a few notes to go over in a bit, but let's see it in action.
I'm using the RetroThink 5X Pro and AverMedia GC573 with OBS to do the capture. Now there is a difference between what you see from what was captured as to what you'd see on screen. Not to mention the refresh rates on the monitors also affect what you see. While that may be the case for PC captures at this point, TV playback is just perfect. Earlier, I mentioned the ability to adjust the brightness. Use a flat or Phillips head screwdriver to turn the trimmer to the right to decrease the brightness or to the left to increase it. Now, if you guys are interested in this little guy, head over to renewedgamingrelics.com to pick one up. Thanks for watching.